Hello, my name is Tommaso Pollio, music producer for the Spirit in Action YouTube channel. With me, so full of clarity, is the other half of the Spirit in Action team, writer and counsellor Claire. Hello. Hi Tom, how are you today? Good, thank you. Good. Thank, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Uh, <laughs> these podcasts are companions to the daily meditations that we produce freely on YouTube. The aim of these discussions is to further clarify what was read out in those meditations. Today we talk further on day 14, having clarity on what you want. The talk opens with these words, when we want change in our lives, we must be the change. Think about what you want to change, then decide whether you are willing to change those things to achieve them. If you don't, you have already failed. These are very strong and true words. Many want change in their lives, but are not so willing to work or actually want to commit to change on achieving those goals. I've seen it in other people and, and particularly in myself still to this very day. Must we always hit rock bottom before we realize what work we need to do to change our circumstances, Claire? Well, uh, our thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and actions are so linked to routine behavior, mm. which we replay basically over and over in our mind, <laughs> which is probably part of why it becomes very hard to change our lives. We tend to be creatures of habit. Yes. And create bad habits, unfortunately, because the good ones aren't a problem. No, no, no. <laughs> Plus, we send, spend a lot of time living in fear, stress, anxiety and worry. And having to deal with negativity, not only from ourselves, but others. However, to turn it around, we have to have a positive mindset. And it helps to be motivated and inspired. And the bottom line is persistence because persistence will help us achieve our goals. You know that very well with what you do, the work you do. If you want something to be right, you repeat and repeat yeah. until it's over right. Over and over. Yeah. What part does fear play a part in this? Well, f fear of pain keeps us locked in the cycle of pain. Okay. And change can be painful. And all change involves some element of pain and that's why so is that is that generally why people are scared of change i mean i'm scared of change all the time even though if it's sometimes for the good like changing changing cars uh, i was very scared of that even well, though I, I had my car for 20 years i was gonna say i see all that as a, a seed of opportunity you know it says do you have to hit rock bottom yeah well or does things have to be so bad uh, that uh, well, the, the pain, basically, all change involves the element of pain, but it's the way to improve your life. Personal change is painful. It's often not until we hit, hit rock bottom does a trap door open and we fall into the light. It helps if you your reason for change compels you it's then easier to push through your limitations. Easier to push through your limitations. If something helps you, compels you to do it. I see, if you have no choice. Right. You know. That often seems to happen. With <laughs> yeah. You just have no other way. There's, you have to only go through that doorway. And there's no other way. Another wonderful thing you mentioned, Claire, is in the talk, you say, find positive people who encourage and help you achieve your goals. Don't surround yourself with negative people. Consistently make steps towards the outcome you want, but make realistic goals and don't be fearful of adjusting your goals. Appreciate any small success you may have towards moving forwards. Be vigilant, notice small gains, and constantly evaluate your goals 
and be gentle on yourself. I find this point very heartening, just looking at life and the improvement of it occurring in small steps. And of course, the big factor is learning to be grateful for the daily lessons life seems to throw at us. I used to go through life thinking every time something bad happened, it was a punishment. That's my <laughs> Catholic upbringing. How do you view the setbacks we all receive in life, Claire? Well, yes, we have to make many steps towards the outcome we want because it's hard to change your life when there's nothing driving you to do so. That's why it helps to be compelled. Uh. Look at reasons that give you a deeper insight into why you're doing what you do. It's always easier to reach goals when something is driving you to it. Write down the reasons for your goals. They help you develop good habits, basically, and the ability to take actions towards that. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, we've got to be gentle on ourselves and develop good habits, like exercise, which is extremely powerful for the mind and body. Just slowly, gently, a little every day. Habits, basically are the gateway to long-lasting change. I'll say that again. Habits, good habits, are the gateway to long-lasting change. To form a habit, what do they say? It's 20 days to form a habit? Well, no, there's many different controversies on that. Some people say 153 is different. But it's, it, it's basically about building new neural pathways. You, you need to know why you must change and then institute new positive habits. But you need to look at why you need to change, what, what it's going to help you to do. So when we form new habits, they etch new neural pathways to the brain, connecting new neurons to one another. When we form new habits, they etch neural pathways in the brain, constantly connecting one group of neurons to another. These pathways form channels of energy that allow energy to flow more easily, basically. So neural pathways etch over time. The more you put them in, the bigger they get. Setbacks I view, as I said earlier, as a seed of opportunity. Like you said before, make a list of the things you want to change and work on one. Break that down into separate sections. Have clarity on the obstacles that prevent it. Could we possibly go yep. over an example? Okay, well, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Ah, oh, yes. So we must change the way we do things. And to do that, we must stop and see what we're doing and be willing to change. So I find writing down things can be very helpful and gives us clarity on what we want. So an example is, say you have very bad negative self-talk and it influences your life and attitude. So mm. the negative self-talk can be, I hate that. I can't deal with that, it's too much. I'm not intelligent enough. I'm not good enough. So to change that, we have to put something else in. So say, instead of I hate that, we could say, I dislike that, but it's growing on me. I can't deal with that, it's too much. We could say, if I calm down and take each step at a time, I can overcome this. For say, I'm not intelligent enough. So there are many ways of being intelligent, and I'm smart, quick, and can learn. I'm not good enough. You could say, I am worthy of being loved and lovable, and I love, respect, and accept myself. So basically, this helps to change your, your approach and attitude to yourself and others. What are the main things you find that people generally want to change? I mean... Well, biggest one is learning to love themselves. Yes. <laughs> Two is probably relationship issues, and three, letting go of your attachment to past habits and hurts. So these are the big things that people... Those went. are usually the big things that we have to work on, yes. But basically, one just wants to be happy. That's the... 
the thing. Well, I think what we really should aim for is happiness, good health and peace of mind. Yes. If we have those things, anything else that's ours will come anyway. Ah, and then you find it, it's a gift. What comes your way, you You attract it to you. Do you find that with um, the, your, the people that you see, clients that you see, do you find that it takes some time a while to guide them until they realise, oh, okay, so that, that, that can all be fixed if I... Yes, there are many levels of seeing and many levels of hearing and people will do it in their own time. You can take a horse to water, you can't make it drink. <laughs> Another powerful thing you say in this talk is... It is you who either rejects or gives life to thought. It's amazing how many times I catch myself thinking thoughts that disempowers me. Whether we know it or not, does meditation help us to learn the best way to control our thoughts? Well, meditation can produce a deep state of relaxation and a tranquil mind. And through meditation, you deactivate your sympathetic nervous system and turn on the parasympathetic, which over time really helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain and depression. We can control only a tiny part of our conscious thought. And the vast majority of our thinking goes on subconsciously. Yeah. In mindfulness meditation, we become <laughs> observant and watchful of the thoughts, emotions and sensations we experience without judgment and from a place of neutrality and with that we become aware of basically our unconscious scripts that play in our minds and learn to identify negative and false beliefs about ourselves in this world which helps us to become more compassionate and accepting of our emotions and basically they say out of this awareness comes and out of awareness comes silence. As we learn to watch our thoughts and emotions rather than being controlled by them, it basically becomes very freeing, empowering and healing. So meditation is an extremely powerful tool. And again, this is something that we just develop slowly and gently. We don't force anything. Right. Suddenly, it does you, you do not do it. Right, you don't have to force yourself to go to a cave and meditate six hours a day <laughs> to fix things up. <laughs> I'm meditating six hours a day till we get this. <laughs> it's about letting go of control, not trying to hold on letting to it. Letting go of control. Letting go of our attachments. And then once we've let go... When we let go, things move. That's a really important thing to remember. When we let go, things move. And what we do is try and hold on to them, hoping they'll move. For me, with age, it's come easier to, to just step back. But as a youngster, I remember that clinging on. But I think a lot of that has come from the work you've done. It uh, helps you to become more reflective and aware of what you're doing and wanting to stop what you're doing if it's not going to be for your benefit. I think the more work you do, the easier it becomes to detach. Yes, there are some things that I've been finding have just, I have detached from without me realizing it's just That's like, right. oh, I'm not thinking that anymore. It's not like, Whereas, you know, no, before... That's why I've always said it's very subtle. Yeah. When did that stop being a problem? <laughs> which is a nice feeling. You're going, oh, okay. Which, you know, maybe a few years ago was a daily thought of mine. Oh, God, oh, God, you know, I don't want to think this. I don't want to... Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh dear, I haven't thought that for a long, 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 long time. Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? I had an experience the other day. I was watching this wonderful movie and it was incredibly uh, deep emotionally and I just sat there and I was bawling my eyes out and I was it was extraordinary because my inner dialogue is feeling alone even though I've always been completely surrounded by everybody 
And I realised that that was what the trigger had been in the movie. But as I was watching it, I realised I was completely detached from the tears. I wasn't in the tears at all. So was the body reacting? It was the body reacting. I wasn't in it at all. And I felt absolutely fine. It was bizarre. So you're just watching, like watching a movie. I was watching a movie. Of yourself crying, Mm. reacting to a movie thing. It wasn't about now at all. That's amazing. Well, I hope I get to that stage one day. I'm sure you will. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I like this. I particularly like this talk. Uh, I listen to this talk a lot. Day 14. (laughs) Well, uh, uh, as I said earlier, I think, you know, it really helps to write down what it is you want, why you think you want it, what are the outcomes you're expecting from it, and what steps you need to achieve those things. Because it helps you have more clarity on it and, and the obstacles that are in your way of it. It brings it up to the surface, if you like. Yes. And that helps you. I found in the past when there were obstacles, that would often just stop me in my tracks. But now I seem to view the obstacles as... Opportunities? Opportunities, and I just view them going, okay, well, we'll just slowly, you know, we'll do this step by step. And yeah, that's right. To achieve, instead of being overwhelmed. Yes, being overwhelmed. Or... Which is another talk. Which comes later on, which we'll talk about overwhelm. That's another favourite talk. Of. Ah, well, thank you so much, Claire. Thank you, Tommaso. If you want to get in touch with Claire, please click on the link below and you can actually organise a time to speak with Claire. If you don't live in Perth, uh, you can actually contact her by Skype. And uh, if you are in Perth, you can come over and and organize a session to talk with her she's very approachable and um, very generous with her time you can also make a comment below and we can um, try to address those things in well the last uh, comment we've got I've I've written another talk on that yes which we'll we get written to another soon. Talk. yes will come soon these take times though so I know this was asked a few months ago and the talk will probably come out in a few months but you know we get there we we work as hard as we can on top of all our other jobs anyway Um, thank you so much Claire thanks to Marcel it's my pleasure sorry love all of a sudden I've got to go to the toilet oh she needs to go to the toilet please let's put the let's move the mic should I mic the toilet